Ahoy class, welcome to week two of digital photography. This week is all about light. You're gonna learn about the different qualities of light and your photo assignments are gonna be all about looking at the direction of light and the color of light. So today I am rushing to uh, get some publicity photos of the card game that I just self-published. This coming week, I will be at a photography conference in St. Louis Wednesday through Saturday and I'll have a vendor's table for my game and so today I figured I would give you like a little peek at what I'm doing and about a third of you maybe close to half are using DSLRs and the other half of you are using phones so I'm going to give you a little peek at that too but this week this week you have a writing assignment instead of a quiz and you'll have a mini photo assignment um, in the discussion forum on the time of day, taking photos throughout the day. And so this is one of the things for photography, it's one of the little things that people don't really pay attention to until they start learning about photography. And that is how the color intensity and direction of light changes throughout the day, or at least I didn't pay attention to it until um, after studying photography. I mean, I knew there was something magical about certain types of times of the day. You'll learn about golden hour and blue hour here. But for your discussion, try your best to take photos throughout the entire day, starting very early in the morning, throughout the day, into the evening. And if you can, do the same scene so that you can see how the light changes. And it's not just the color of the light, it's the direction of the light because the sun's moving overhead and the sun is essentially a giant spotlight. And then also the intensity of the light. Yeah, in midday is usually the worst time to go take portraits outside because the shadows are going to be super harsh. You want to do it towards the morning or the evening when the light is softer or if you're lucky, an overcast day. An overcast day is one of the best days to go outside and take photos of things because those clouds basically serve as a soft box or a softening effect. So yeah. And then I also want you to pay attention to the different colors of light and different types of light, not just natural light outside, but artificial light too. So um, different light bulbs give off different colors of light. Um, just start looking around you and noticing what the light is doing. And a lot of times, here's a tip, a lot of times when you're taking photos, you might think you're gonna photograph one thing, but if you see beautiful light, hitting something else, that's probably the thing you should photograph. So now let me give you a peek at what I'm doing. So I've got this pop-up soft box, uh, light box here, which is really awesome. And I'm photographing my game. It's got a light up here at the top. It's got some lights on the bottom. I can control the intensity a little bit. I could move them to the sides and move them around. So I'm just trying to illuminate this fairly well not too much light from the front because I don't want to wash it out. If you have too much light, it can wash it out. And I'm going to shoot some pictures with my being solar camera. Okay, so here I've got a Nikon Z6. I'm take my lens cap off. It's always a good idea to keep your lens cap on to protect your lens. And I don't have one on right now, but if you have a DSLR, I highly recommend getting an inexpensive UV filter to put on your lens to protect it because lenses are the most expensive part of a camera. Like once you have your, like the bodies really aren't that expensive, but once you start buying lenses, they're really expensive. So this one is a full frame camera. With DSLRs, there's generally two sensor sizes. There's full frame and crop sensor. Full frame just means it's a, it's a larger sensor. It's the equivalent of a 35 millimeter film. This one has a 24 to 70 zoom lens. I'm able to toggle this between autofocus and manual focus. I highly recommend just putting it in manual focus and learning to manually focus your camera. I hardly ever shoot in autofocus mode unless I'm on vacation. Even then I usually switch it to manual focus so that I can control exactly what point it's focusing on. And also you just learned about depth of field, controlling that depth of field. So this camera, here on the barrel, this is uh, how much it zoomed. So zoomed out to 70, zoomed into 24. 
I'm going, this one, this model has a handy ISO button right here. So you can see my ISO is 400. I usually try not to raise it above 400 if I'm taking like a really nice image that I want to use commercially. But depending on the camera, you may not see what's called digital noise until you get up over 1200. And so right here is my shutter speed and here's my aperture listed as an f-stop. So I do want this to have a fairly shallow depth of field. The lower this number is, the shallower that depth of field is going to be. Let's see if you can. And so when I use a DSLR, I'm going to look through the viewfinder and use the display to help me frame this exactly the way I want it. Now this is a mirrorless camera, which I love because they're lighter weight and because you can shoot completely silent. Like I just took pictures and you didn't hear it. You would normally hear it on a normal camera because there's a shutter that physically closes, but this one doesn't have that, which I like because often I'm trying to be a ninja. I don't want people to know I'm taking pictures. Um, I want candid so that I can capture people in life as they actually are and not pose. So on this camera, I'm gonna to toggle this to change my shutter speed. And for this, I should be able to go, I'm going to put it about 125. Inside the viewfinder, there's all kinds of stuff going on. A rule of thirds grid. I can see what my focus distance is. And then I've got my display back here so I can see what I just got and you can, um, okay, that's not it. Your camera will have different buttons. You gotta get familiar with your own camera because you're all shooting with different cameras, but there'll be a button that gives you like your histogram breakdowns. Like this one's showing me one for each color. This top one is, is overall. And then we've got the RGB channels and here we've got some of the EXIF data. Here I can see what my settings are. We can see this is looking a little bright right here, but also on a DSLR, when you view your image, you can zoom in. So I don't know what percentage that is right now, but you can zoom in to see if your focus is where you want it to be. There's all kinds of different features you can use, but I do want to say for those of you using a DSLR, what I recommend is set your ISO to 400. Don't eat. Don't change your ISO unless you absolutely have to. Start by working with your DSLR. I mean, you can do this with Halide too. Halide, you, you can't control aperture. But start by only adjusting one setting at a time. And generally, I would say set your ISO to something and make it that other setting that you adjust. So as you're playing with lighting and stuff like that, set your ISO to 400. Set your aperture to whatever seems appropriate and just experiment with changing your shutter speed and then set your shutter speed to a single setting and then play with aperture because shutter speed is going to affect motion in your images so if you have a really low shutter speed you are going to get movement or camera shake if you have a high one, you can freeze motion. So basically a low one captures motion, a high one freezes motion. And then with your aperture, the lower the aperture, the shallower the depth of field is going to be, the higher the aperture, the deeper the depth of field. Now, of course, both of these settings are also controlling how much light is coming through. So you have to control that. And then last but not least, I wanted to talk to you a minute about how some tips on holding your camera. So with your DSLR, you know, like often I will wrap, I don't like to wear the strap around it. I'll, I'll put a strap around my arm just to secure it, but I'm cradling it in one hand and holding it over here with the other. And when I shoot, I try to be, I try to hold it really firm, really steady and very still. You need to be as still as possible with your camera or your phone so that the camera isn't moving and causing your images to be blurry. So however however you're holding it, just make sure that it's stable. But like if you're gripping DSLR camera, it's a good idea. Bring your elbows into your body, like lock them in, you know, and shoot like this. 
because it's more you're stabilizing the camera. If you shoot like this, it's a lot more wobbly. The same thing with your phone. I posted a video in the discussion forum on my tip, which is using a pop socket and placing it so that you can grip your phone and press the button. Same time, it's a lifesaver and it's it helps stabilize the camera. But if you don't have that, just make sure that you're holding that phone steady or that you're using a tripod. So this week, if you need me, please text me. I'll be available the next couple of days, but Wednesday through Saturday is going to be absolutely crazy. I'm going to try to take some photos and a little video of the conference I'm attending to share with you. Um, this conference is the Society for Photographic Education. It's my favorite organization. I've been involved with it since 2009. It was my first professional conference as an undergrad student. It was the highlight of my undergrad. Like going to my first SBE conference was more beneficial than a good chunk of my undergrad education because I got to go be surrounded by people that were super passionate and doing really interesting work and join a community that helped motivate and inspire me. So if any of you do get like really bitten by the photography bug, I highly recommend checking out SPE. They have a national conference every spring and regional conferences in the fall. And they're very student friendly. And it, the organization definitely changed my life. So I'm gonna, in, in this class, I'm gonna like hype them up because they're great. Almost everyone I've known that's gone to SPE has ended up getting scholarships, travel grants, and you know, mentorship of, of all kinds and it's just absolutely fantastic so yeah all right i've got to get back to photographing this game so that i can pack and drive to st louis have a good week guys